afternoon. This is a play reading of Trifles, a play in one act by Susan Glassbill. The following one act play is reprinted from Trifles by Susan Glassbill, New York, Frank Shea, 1916. It is now in the public domain and may therefore be performed without royalties. The characters are as follows. George Henderson, County Attorney, read by Chris Velez. Henry Peters, Sheriff, read by Hardy Koenig. Lewis Hale, a neighboring farmer, read by Jay Schmuck. Mrs. Peters, read by Melanie Jan Detzel. And Mrs. Hale, read by Rebecca Eastman. The stage directions that are not embedded in dialogue will be read aloud for clarity of dramatic action. Here we go. The kitchen in the now abandoned farmhouse of John Wright a gloomy kitchen, and left without having been put in order. Unwashed pans under the sink, a loaf of bread outside the bread box, a dish towel on the table, other signs of incompleted work. At the rear, the outer door opens and the sheriff comes in, followed by the county attorney and Hale, the sheriff. The sheriff and Hale are men in their middle life. The county attorney is a young man. All are much bundled up and go at once to the stove. They are followed by the two women, the sheriff's wife first. She is a slight, wiry woman, a thin, nervous face. Mrs. Hale is larger and would ordinarily be called more comfortable looking, but she is disturbed now and looks fearfully about as she enters. The women have come in slowly and stand close together near the door. This feels good. Come up to the fire, ladies. I'm not Cold. Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explained to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything moved? Are things just as you left them yesterday? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on but I told him not to touch anything except the stove and you know Frank. Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday. When I had to send Frank to Morris Center for that man who went crazy, I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today and as long as I went over everything here myself. Well, uh, Mr. Hale, Tell just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I had started the town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place, and as I got here, I said, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to Wright about it once before, and he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway. And uh, all he asked was peace and quiet. I, I guess you know about how much he talked himself. But I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife, though I said to Harry that I didn't know as, as what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Let's talk about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but tell now just what happened when you got to the house. I didn't hear or see anything. I, I knocked at the door, and, and still it was all quiet inside. I, I knew they must be up. It was past 8 o'clock. So I knocked again, and I thought I heard somebody say, come in. I wasn't sure. I'm, I'm not sure yet, but I opened the door, uh, this door, and there in that rocker sat Mrs. Wright. They all look at the rocker. What, uh, what, what was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand. It was kind of pleading it. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next and, and kind of done up. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Well, I don't think she minded one way or other. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do, Mrs. Wright? It, it's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And went on kind of pleading at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. 
I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a little sharp, Can I see John? No, she says, kind of doll-like. Ain't he home, says I? Yes, says she, he's home. And why can't I see him, I asked her, out of patience, because he's dead, she says she. Dead, says I? She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Why, where is he, says I, not knowing what to say. She just pointed upstairs like, like that. I got up and with the idea of going up there. I, I walked from there to here. Then I says, why, what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck, says she, and just went on pleating at her apron. Well, I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need help. We went upstairs, and there he was, lying. I think I'd rather have you get into that upstairs where, where you can point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked... But Harry, he went up to him, and he said, No, he's dead, all right, and we better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked? No, says she, unconcerned. Who did this, Mrs. Wright, said Harry. He said it business-like, and, and she stopped pleating of her apron, and I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry? No, says she. Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry? Yes, says she, but I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope round his neck and strangled him, and you didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up, she said after him. We must have looked as if we didn't see how that could be, for after a minute, she said, I sleep sound. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said maybe we ought to let her tell her story first of the coroner or the sheriff. So, so Harry went fast as he could to River's place, where there's a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew that you had gone for the corner? She moved from that chair to, to this one over here and just sat there with her hands held together and, and looking down. I got a feeling that I ought to make some conversation, so I said I'd come in to see if John wanted to put in a telephone. And that she started to laugh. Then she stopped and looked at me, scared. Don't know, don't know if it was scared, but I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, Mr. Peters, and, and so I guess that's all I know that you don't. Okay, um, I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the BAM and around there. Uh, you're convinced there was nothing important here, nothing that would point to any motive? Nothing here but them kitchen things. The county attorney, after again looking around the kitchen, opens the door of the cupboard closet. He gets up on a chair and looks on a shelf, pulls here's his hand away, sticky. Here's a nice mess. The women draw nearer. Oh, her fruit, it did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire go out and her jars would break. <laughs> Hell, can you beat the women? Hell for murder and worrying about her preserves. I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. The two women move a little closer together. And yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Dirty towels, not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. To be sure. And yet, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. I've not seen much of her late years. I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. And why was that? You don't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives had their hands full, Mr. Henderson, and, and then... Yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know his right head either. You mean that they didn't get on very well? 
No, I don't mean anything. And I don't think a place to be any cheerfuller for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk a little of more a little more of that later. I want to get the lay of the things upstairs. Now. I suppose anything Mrs. Peter does will be all right. She was to take in some clothes for her, you know, a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take. Mrs. Peters, and keep an eye out for anything that might be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. The women listen to the men's steps on the stairs, then look about the kitchen. I'd hate to have men coming into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. She arranged the pans under the sink, which the lawyer had shoved out of place. Of course it's no more than their duty. Duty's all right, but I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have got a little of this on. Wish I'd thought of that sooner. Seems meant to talk about her, mean to talk about her for not taking things slipped up when she had come away in such a hurry. She had breath set. She was going to put this in there. It's a shame about her fruit. Wonder if it's all gone. I think there's some here that's all right, Mrs. Peters. Yes, here. This is cherries, too. I declare I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work in the wet, hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put my cherries up last summer. She puts the bottle on the big kitchen table, center of the room, with a sigh, is about to sit down in the rocking chair. Before she is seated, realizes what chair it is, with a slow look at it, steps back. The chair, which she has touched, rocks back and forth. Well, I must get those things from the front room closet. You coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You can help me carry them. They go in the other room, reappear, Mrs. Peters carrying a dress and skirt, Mrs. Hale following with a pair of shoes. Oh my, it's cold in here. She puts on the clothes on the big table and hurries to the stove. Right with close. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part, and then you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that, oh, that was 30 years ago. This all you was to take in? She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, for there is much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. But I suppose just to make her feel more natural. She said they was in the top drawer in this cupboard. Yes, here. And that little straw that always hung behind the door. Yes, here it is. Quickly shuts the door leading upstairs. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Hale. Do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for an apron and her little shawl, worrying about her fruit. Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in a speech, and he'll make fun of her saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they was slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty and still. They say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out that what was needed for the case was a motive, something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. It's wiped to here. I, I wonder how they are finding things upstairs. I hope she had a little more red up time there. You know, it all seems kind of sneaking, locking her up in town and then coming back here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. Well, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is. Better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. Mrs. Peters takes off her fur tippet, goes to hang it on hook at the back of the room, and stands looking at the under part of the small corner table. She was piecing a quilt. 
She brings the large sewing basket and they look at the bright pieces. It's log cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she's going to quilt it or just knot it. Footsteps have been heard coming down the stairs. The sheriff enters, followed by Hale and the county attorney. They wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> then laugh. The woman look abashed. Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? Well, let's go out to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't know if there's anything so strange or taking up our time. The little things we're... We was waiting for them to get evidence. I don't see us anything to laugh about. Of course, they've got awful important things on their minds. Mrs. Peters, look at this one. Here, this is the one she was working on. And look at the sewing. All the rest of it has been so nice and even. And look at this. It's all over the place. It looks as if she didn't know what she was about. After she has said that, they look at each other, then start to glance back at the door. After an instant, Mrs. Hale has pulled at a knot and ripped the sewing. Oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? Just pulling out a stitch or two that's not sewed very good. Bad sewing always makes me fidgety. I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Hale. What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. She was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I could find a piece of paper and string. In that cupboard, maybe. Why, there's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? Oh, I, I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here for so long. There was a man around last year selling canaries cheap. But I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. It seems funny to think of a bird here. But she must have had one, or why would she have had a cage? I wonder what happened to it. I suppose maybe the cat got it. No, oh, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats, being afraid of them. My cat got in her room and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. My sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Why, look at this door. It's broke. One hand is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Yes. She brings the cage forward and puts it on the table. I wish if they're going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. I'm also glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It would be lonesome for me sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I'd come over sometimes when she was here. I, I wish I had. But of course you were off Mrs. Hale, her house, and the children. I could have come. I stayed away because it weren't cheerful, and that's why I ought to have come. I, I've never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place and always was. I wish I'd come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. Well, you mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. And right out to work all day and no company when you did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Yes, good. He didn't drink and he kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters, just to pass the time of day with him. Oh, like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird. But what do you suppose went with it? I don't know, unless it got sick and died. She reaches over and swings the broken door, swings it again. Both women watch it. You weren't raised around here, were you? You didn't know her? Not till they brought her yesterday. 
she, come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself, real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and, and fluttery. How she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind. Why, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Now, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in here. And her things. They look in the sewing basket. Here's some red, but I expect this has got sewing things in it. What a pretty box. Looks like something somebody would give you. Maybe her scissors are in here. There's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. Why, this isn't her scissors. Oh, oh, Mrs. Peters, it's... 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 It's the bird. Oh, Mrs. Peters, look at it. It's neck. Look at its neck. It's all the other side, too. Somebody wrong its neck. Their eyes meet, a look of growing comprehension of horror. Steps are heard outside. Mrs. Hale slips the box under the quilt pieces and sinks into her chair. Enter sheriff and county attorney. Mrs. Peters rises. Well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or not it? We think she was going to not it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? We think the, the cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. No sign at all of anyone having come from the outside. Their own rope. Now let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. Would have to have been someone who knew just the... Mrs. Peters sits down. The two women sit there not looking at one another, but as if peering into something, and at the same time holding back. When they talk now, it is in the manner of feeling their way over strange ground, as if afraid of what they are saying, but as if they cannot help saying it. She liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy who took a hatchet, and before my eyes, and before I could get there, if they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem never to have had any children around. No. Wright wouldn't like the bird, a thing that sang. She used to sing. He killed that, too. You don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing was done in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept. Slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him. Her hand goes out and rests on the birdcage. We don't know who killed him. We, we don't know. If there had been years and years of nothing, then a bird to sing to you? It would be awful, still, after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, after he was two years old, and me with no one other than... How soon do you think they'll be through? Looking for evidence. I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and stood up there in the choir and sang. Oh, I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't take on. I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together and we live far apart. We go through all the same things. It's all just a different kind of the same thing. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Take this in to prove it to her. She, she may never know whether it was worth or not. 
Come on, it's a good thing the men couldn't hear us. Wouldn't they just laugh? Get him turned up over a little thing like a dead canary? As if that could have anything to do with, with, wouldn't they just laugh? The men are heard coming downstairs. Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But you know juries when it comes to women. If there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up this strange way of doing it. The women's eyes meet for an instant. Enter Hale from the outer door. Well, I've got the team around. Pretty cold out there. I'm going to stay here a while by myself. Uh, you, you could send Frank out for me, can't you? I want to go every, over everything. I'm not satisfied that we can't do better. Do you want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take him? The lawyer goes to the table, picks up the apron, laughs. <laughs> I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. No, Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> married to the law. I just want you to come in here a minute, George. We ought to take a look at these windows. <laughs> oh, windows. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Hale goes outside. The sheriff follows the county attorney into the other room. Then Mrs. Hale rises, hands tight together, looking intensely at Mrs. Peters, whose eyes make a slow turn, finally meeting Mrs. Hale's. A moment Mrs. Hale holds her, and then her own eyes point the way to where the box is concealed. Suddenly, Mrs. Peters throws back quilt pieces and tries to put the box in the bag she is wearing. It is too big. She opens the box, starts to take the bird out, cannot touch it, goes to pieces, stands there helpless. Sound of a knob turning in the other room. Mrs. Hale snatches the box and puts it in the pocket of her big coat. Enter county attorney and sheriff. Well, Henry, at least we found out that she was not going to quilt it. She was going to, what is it you call it, ladies? We call it not it, Mr. Henderson. Curtain. <laughs> 